Right, so I'm going to have a bit of a play around the capacitors here. So um, I've got this in here, graphing and things like that. So I've got a few things going. I've got my bench power supply running at 30 volts, uh, one amp, supposedly. Actually, I'll just increase that output. Thinking about it. 3.1 amps maximum output. And I've got a capacity. This is a uh, 63 volt. Uh, 470 UF cap, all right. I've got this thing here just to discharge a cap, and I've done a test, all right. So that's what that's doing, just a convenient resistor. Now, what I'm sort of doing here is preparation for my little project where I want to do a, a leakage tester. But I want to see what capacitor uh, charging currents are like um, by doing some practical tests. So I want to see what the count will spike at, how quickly it decays, and that kind of thing. I freeze frame on the scope already. Now I'm going to do this again and show you what I'm doing. I've got this scope capturing as well. So this is capturing current here, um, in current mode here through the graphing. I've got this scope across this 2 ohm resistor. So that will measure the voltage across that resistor there. And based on the calculation of voltage I see on the scope and name that resistance means I know how much current is flowing. This should also tell me as well, but this is going to be obviously much faster to see the actual response. This may not be fast enough to see the spikes. So I'm going to set this on single shot. Bring the current a bit higher, or trigger level a bit higher. So that's power supply is turned on. Let's touch the wire. Okay. So this did register it, but it didn't register the top end. Uh, that's what I scale it. So that said 5 milliamps. All right, that's what that saw was 5 milliamps. The scope, on the other hand, has seen... Uh, hmm, so 5 volts of division I've got set to, so that's at least 20 volts. It's just above that level. So that's 20 volts um, plus across a 2 ohm load. So what's that? That's 10 amps. A 10 amp spike charging spike so that's pretty impressive isn't it <laughs> um, obviously it's discharging the caps inside the power supply because that's where it's getting that big spike from but that's you know a 10 amp surge and in, in inrush current on that thing so I need to kind of allow for those high voltages and those big voltages across the sensing resistors now this is only a 2 ohm resistor all right now if I use a larger resistor the um, inrush current is much less a smaller voltage spike. So if I actually use a resistor in here, which is a, a 10k, I'll use the discharges first. And if I go straight into here with that, take that resistor out of the way, stick this one on here. This is using a resistor of 1k. Now before I showed you a 2 ohm resistor, okay, this is a 1k, so the this curves are much different. Um, so I've got this on single capture. I've already kind of set this up. So let's grab one. There we go. Okay, so that's obviously a much longer, longer time period now. Instead of being a you know, really short, you know, millisecond time, I might do that again with a different capture rate. We'll see how we go. It's going to take a bit longer to capture. I better do a discharge first. I probably picked it, picked it up actually. Right, cool. All right. All right. So that reckons the four times one point three, uh, one point one three seconds down here. Um, maximum. So here we get a forty-one volt spike which still sounds significant, but when you think about the fact it's across a 1k load, the larger the load, the larger the voltage spike is going to be. Um, because it's across a, a, large, a larger resistance. But if you think about the actual resistance value, calculate that out, that's actually proportionally much less. Now where's my calculator? I won't use my phone, but I'm kind of recording on that. I must never use this one, so we'll see how we go. So we've got 41 volts, so 41 divided by 1 kilo ohm, 1000, equals 
0.041 amps so 41 milliamps is the actual uh, spike in current there so last time I was getting like 5 amps or 7.5 amps or something like that now I'm getting 41 milliamps right? because the charging energy is now spread over a larger period of time you know it helps to cushion it and just um, control the charge rate which is why I use resistors, resistors in those kinds of situations in order to do that there we go, roll my so we'll do a discharge here like that and there's a discharge curve okay this is on 500 milliseconds of division right now and there's a charge curve you'll see they look very similar because I'm going through the same loading right there should be pretty much the same energy going in and the same energy coming out if I do that one again uh, discharge you first So yeah, it's about 45 volt peak on that one, but, uh, but so it's around still around 40 milliamps in rush current, which isn't too bad across a one ohm load. And if I do a 10 ohm load instead, we'll discharge it. I guess we'll dis discharge it. And there we go there, and you can see here, it's still got a very well, it's got an even longer tail on it now. The voltage spike is the same but the current is different so it's got a 10k resistance so that is 4 milliamps roughly because the spike was about that so let's bring this up so that's showing 37.2 volts peak 34.8 volts peak and this is showing 2.8 milliamps on here so we go 34.8 we'll work that out so 34.8 divided by, I'm on 10k, so that's 10,000. About 3.4 milliamps, 3.5 milliamps closer. So, you know. So how I actually end up doing this project with the leakage detector will depend a lot on how I choose to set up this resistance value now. A smaller resistance will allow a faster inrush current at a higher, higher charge rate, higher discharge rate. But it will also give a lower voltage, effectively. So I actually think if I use a larger resistor, it will just take longer to give a reading. Plus, I think it will probably make it more sensitive to any leakage, um, because it, the voltage difference will probably be greater on a larger resistor. Um, I was thinking about using like a one ohm resistor for the current sensing, but now I'm thinking that's probably going to be a mistake. I probably need a larger resistor than that. And if I use a 10 ohm one here, I'll go back to uh, auto roll mode, roll mode if I can say it. So that's, um, you see how quick that spark is, you know, that's a huge difference in, in time. Okay. That's 29.6 volts across 10 ohms. I should just leave this thing on, shouldn't I? 29.6 divided by 10. That's 2.96 amps. Alright, so that's the inrush current. So I really need to think about what I use because I need a good sensitivity on the actual current going through this thing so that if it does have leakage it will show up now I could probably simulate that if I had a resistor across here I could probably simulate that let's have a little look at that show we? hopefully that burning resistors out let's make sure I've got this on a big value one meg stick that across there that should oh we're missing here that's current I'll need that across Let's change sides here. So I'll measure the, the voltage across the capacitor now instead. One mix too big, let's go 100k. 10k. That's discharging the capacitor now. 
So I mean, even measuring internal leakage, you charge it up and check for discharge rate. Um, I don't know, there's, there's different ways of checking for this, but I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do yet. To get the resolution I need to be able to see a difference is potentially problematic. I mean, if there's high voltage leakage, then you might see the voltage dropping. I mean, you can see it dropping here very slowly. So you can see the value dropping. It's just gradually coming down. It's about 22 volts now. So maybe if there was an issue with um, a big loading across it, and that's on 33, or 330k across there. If we got to one meg, it probably just stabilise a bit and stop producing so quickly. Yeah, because this is effectively a you know a discharge resistor across it. I'll bring it down a bit faster. You'll see it coming down more. All right. Yeah, it's a 6.8k across there now, and it's coming down. So if there's an issue with breakdown, then maybe you would see it drop more rapidly. I mean, I don't know, maybe this test I'm, I was going to design, I was going to use an Arduino. Now I'm thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't be using Arduino. Maybe I should have a scope put on it. And you hook the scope up to it and you actually just visualise uh, what's going on. That may be better. And checking for charge time, discharge time in that ramping. See if there's any erratic display. I don't think I've got any bad capacitors here. It's a problem. I've, I've thrown them all out. That's what we really need is a bad capacitor. Okay, I found a cap, which I, I'm not even sure if it's a bad one. I think it might even be okay. But this one I've ripped out of the fluke from the power supply section. And um, so I've reconfigured my setup here. I'm using a 2 ohm resistor here because um, I'm worried about the inrush current blowing the hell out of this little resistor bank. And I've got it set to 15 volts on here now. Still maximum current. Because this is a 15 volt cap, all right? So this shouldn't be stressed too much. I've got this set up to run. That set up to run. Hopefully, we'll see something which is of interest. So let's whack that on there. Okay, that was surprisingly fast. 256 milliamps according to that meter there. But again, it doesn't capture really fast spikes. It's um, takes a bit longer than that to read them so let's just discharge this again okay find out is that gonna stop no uh, so one volt division is about a two volt spike on there across two ohms we'll set eight amps really why am I thinking of this like this it's one amp isn't it yeah <sighs> Dear. Two volts divided by. <laughs> oh my god. All right. It's been a long day. So it's about one amp spike on there, it would seem. So I might just uh, do a different configuration and measure across this with. This instead, hold on, let's just change everything around. Uh, hook this up to this. I just thought those around, should be that way around. Okay, that like that, that like that. This one onto here. And we'll use a 1k load. Increase this level here because I think it's well, 15 volt division can't be that bad, can it? So I'll leave it on one, one volt and I'll leave that on auto, so it's rolling. And we shall hook this up to here. That should give us some response. Right, there we go. So it's got this charge up current there. So that's set nearly three divisions, so three volts there. And that's across 1k. It's taken a long time to just charge up. The current here is like not even showing up. And it's showing as 2.4 millivolts, uh, milliamps, sorry. And that may be close. 
based on that ramping. So let's have a look at something here. So it's 3 volts divided by, well it's about 2.8, slightly under 3 volts. So 1000, here's about 2.8 millivolts roughly. So that's very close to what that said, 2.4. So, interestingly, that is charging much less rapidly than this one. And this is 15,000 UF, that's 470. Isn't that interesting?